is how legends are made. Legendary. There's so many legends in this building today. Legendary. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Legendary, the podcast. I'm Kevin Jonas Sr. We're so excited that you're here. Every week we interview people that I look up to, people that I consider legends that have had legendary moments that are great. Today, we've asked some of you to bring questions to me to answer, and we chose a variety of those questions. I'm going to choose them randomly and answer those questions for you, questions that relate to the boy's career, my career, music, the music business, raising talented kids. Welcome to Legendary, the podcast. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome to Legendary, the podcast. I am Kevin Jonas Sr., and as you know, every week, we interview folks about their life and their career, and this week, we're taking a little bit of a different approach. We are actually uh, soliciting some comments and some questions from people out there who have asked me a number of questions, so I encourage you to listen along as I am being asked questions from you, and I hope that you will find it entertaining. I hope that you will find it informative. Uh, it's exciting for me to be able to share with you. I feel like this part of my life, that is a big part of what we're doing. And so I'm just going to grab a few questions from people. Uh, and we'll start with a question from Sarah T. Uh, who is someone you personally admire in the industry? Uh, and I'm assuming that means the broad entertainment industry, but I'm going to specifically go with music. Uh, I would start with Tony Orlando. He's been a longtime friend. Uh, I didn't know his early music, wasn't even born. But he started as a teenager, late 50s, early 60s. I was born in 65, became aware of his music, especially in, at the start of the 70s. Uh, and right away with Dawn and Tony Orlando and Dawn, knocked three times on the ceiling. Uh, incredible songs, incredible impact. Tie a yellow ribbon around the old oak tree, Candida. Uh, his impact in culture, his example, and later on in life, meeting him, his daughter was a Jonas fan, but so humble, hospitable. Um, we just hit it off, and I, I love just listening. Nobody tells stories and has had the experiences Tony Orlando has. So he he is one of the people I admire. There's a man named David Massey, who was the first one that we were introduced to and he signed Nick at 11 years old to his first solo deal and then optioned in the brothers. Uh, he has been a longtime friend. We've had, we've had numerous artists that we've worked on together. Uh, Johnny Wright would be one that I truly admire. Johnny, an amazing guy. Uh, he had worked with New Kids, Backstreet, NSYNC, Britney, Justin Timberlake, Jonas Brothers, Janet Jackson, etc., uh, I can't tell you the number of times that I called Johnny freaking out and Johnny would talk me off the ledge, tell me that, you know, your kids are not going to die on this hill. And they didn't. And now I tell people all the time, you're not going to die on this hill. And they're like, how can you stay so calm? And I always say Johnny Wright, uh, Steve Greenberg, a wonderful friend, also had him on the podcast. Uh was instrumental in helping the boys kind of find that combination. He stirred the pot of Kevin's love of indie rock and the front man and the soulfulness, and he mixed it all up and kind of came out with uh, genius. And, and he did a lot and sacrificed a lot for my kids, and I'll forever be in his debt. And someone that I haven't really brought up, but uh, Bob Bolin. I was a man that I met through our chiropractor. Uh, he and I shared a passion for asking deep questions, especially about faith. And uh, Bob happened to be the head of Sony Music International. So he's the guy responsible for like taking Michael Jackson to the world and bringing Celine Dion and Shakira to the U.S. Um, and he befriended us and opened up doors and actually introduced me and Nick at the time to David Massey. Uh, incredible, incredible guy. If I think through one other, it would probably be a man named Bob Mason. Uh, and unfortunately, we lost Bob to COVID last year. It was a day I lost two of my dear friends in 24 hours, uh, one to COVID and the other to uh, long-running physical issues. And it was a devastating day 
But Bob was the one I would call for advice. He was the one I would call for prayer. He was the one that would stay up with me in the middle of the night and just drive around Dallas, Fort Worth and help me process all that was going on in my life. Uh, I, I will forever miss him uh, and miss being able to call him when there's a need. So, Sarah, thank you for that question. I appreciate that. Uh, from Jenny Z, you were very hands on and instrumental in the boy's career for a long time. Now, all of you have your own endeavors. How hard was it letting go of being so hands-on in their career? And how did you balance mixing family and business? Well, it's a very good question. I don't know that I have an answer, but I will try. Uh, I never really saw it as two different positions. So for me, the dad hat, the manager hat were one hat. And it was to be there for my kids, to protect my kids, to advise my kids, and to know when to step back and make it about my kids. It wasn't about me. Um, when the time came uh, to have the discussion individually and then ultimately collectively with the guys about their career, uh, it was tough at first. Uh, I knew that I was also battling something I, physically. I didn't know what it was. It turned out to be cancer. I was not quite myself for a while. And the limitations, the fatigue, um, I was fighting the big C and it was difficult. And so it was tough at first. Uh, part of it was just tough having conversations with family where it's time for me to grow up. Uh, as a dad, you never want to have that conversation and you know it's coming. Um, and when it came, it was tough. Uh, when the boys broke up, it coincided with my time soon after to no longer be involved in day-to-day -day management for them. Um, and so it was tough. It was tough in the way that sending your kids to college is tough. Watching them get married can be tough and at the same time exhilarating. Uh, while I talk about this, I'm going to use my stress ball because it was stressful, <laughs> but it was amazing. And my kids walked it out with love and grace, and they allowed me the time and the the, the grace I needed to absorb the need for change. Soon after I found out I was dealing with cancer and it was uh, a difficult journey that they were right by my side. They have been by my side. Uh, I've celebrated more wins with them. And I love the season where I can be granddad and focused, where I can be dad and focused. Uh, I manage other artists. They are very supportive and have taken some of those artists out on the road. They've helped with music. Uh, you know, all the things that you know about my kids, that multiplied. They are who they are. They love the way they love. They care for me the way they should and the way I care for them. And so how, how do we manage these uh, individual pursuits? We have the restaurant. They're a part of it. We have uh, other artists that I work with. They're supportive of it. I'm supportive of their career. I think anybody who sees me knows how involved I am. Uh, watching them live is still one of the great joys of my life. Watching Frankie and his now release of music. Uh, you know, I was so honored this week. Frankie actually mentioned me in his Rolling Stone interview. And I thought it was hilarious that he was mentioning how excited I was about his song, Cocaine, as an ordained minister. And I was like, this is my favorite part. And I saw this one TikTok where this girl's like, Frankie, this is my favorite part right here. I can't wait to hear that live. And that's what I said. <laughs> and so I'm so proud of them all. I love being their dad. I love being their cheerleader. And they have equally been supportive of my dreams. And so we're a family. And at the end of the day, sometimes being family is tough. But I've been fortunate. Those times are very rare. And and a lot of times when they're tough, it's because ego gets involved. Uh, so I hope that answered your question, Jenny Z. Thank for uh, for challenging me with that one. Uh, moving over to Sherry K. What is the biggest lesson or takeaway? And I'm grabbing these randomly. What is the biggest lesson or takeaway from all the hats you've worn over the years? Uh, don't wear so many hats is <laughs> probably the answer to that question. Um, What's my biggest lesson or takeaway? I, I guess I would say if you can multitask, then wear as many hats as you can facilitate. I can. So I actually 
in life, I probably have like a hat stand and I take the hats on. I do that. I put it down. I pick up the other hat and I do it. I don't know what life would be like doing one thing and being limited to one thing. Uh, I admire people who can do that. I'm not one of them, but I make sure at this point in my life that it's something I'm passionate about and I lose, lose attention and I lose patience at this point in my life, getting older, just had a birthday, just turned 58. I lose patience uh, with things that are life suckers. Uh, so I make sure that whatever hat I'm wearing at this point in my life brings a life satisfaction as well. And I'm quick to change things if that changes. So hopefully that answered your question. Over to uh, Kira, Kira L. If you could give one piece of advice to another parent who is guiding their child on an upward trajectory in the industry, what is the advice you wish someone could have given you? I hinted at it before. I'll give you several bits of advice. Your child is worth it. Number one, they're worth it. What's the worst that can happen? You will have spent some money on the person you love. It's worth it. You could have given time to someone you love. It's worth it. You could have been focused on something else instead of them. What would be more important than your child? Uh, and at the end of the day, you're going to have time together. Most important. So I, I, I give advice to take the risk. They're worth it. The time is worth it. The opportunity is worth it. If they have the gift. Now, if they have it in sports, do it there. If they have it in art, do it there. If they have it in music, do it there. If they have it in academics, do it there. But do it. Don't sit back and tell your child that it's unrealistic. Because a lot of really great and talented people have suffered with that and had the trauma of knowing there's something inside you and not being able to live it. Drive your kid to their match. Drive your kid to their show. Take them to the auditions. And when they're rejected, tell them they're worth it. Don't let the world tear them down. Build them up. I remember the times. I remember this one time in particular. Kevin had gone to like five auditions in the city, and it looked like they were going to choose another kid. And he was really upset. And I said, you know, I know it was five times. You learned a lot. It was worth it. We went to some expense getting in and out of the city, going to these auditions, money we didn't have. But it's all worth it. But you never, ever know. And he's like, I know, but I put so much time into it. I said, you know, you don't know if something better might come along and you don't know that this particular opportunity might have been second. Well, fast forward, they called and offered him the job. He did do a great job. Those five auditions worked, but another job came along that was better, that paid more and was national, not regional. And he got that job and actually ended up turning down the five audition job so keep your eyes on doing what's right, keeping it going, stay faithful, keep working, because you will eventually get there, and the thing that gets there might not be the part that challenged you. It might be part of preparing you for what's next. Next, Jamie H., how has the boy's career brought your family closer in recent years? Uh, I don't know that I think about the career bringing our lives closer because I don't look at our relationship as dependent on the career. What I will say is watching their families and seeing the dads they are, the husbands they are, the commitments to their family uh, inspires me. Uh, I told them recently, thank you so much. You're, you're continuing to be a part of my evolution. I'm growing because of you. Um, and, and that ties into, Jamie, you had a secondary question here. What's the craziest thing about being a granddad? Um, I don't baby talk to anybody. I baby talk uh, with my grandkids, and, and I love it. Um, but I, I, I have a, a philosophy. I have a mindset about being a granddad. See, my life with my kids always came with responsibility who they would be, the husbands they would ultimately be, the men that they would be, I took seriously. It was, it was uh, empowering for me to think about, but it was also a responsibility that I wore with some gravity. 
Um, and so anything that went into their life, I thought about where they would end up. Their training was on me. I loved them, but I had responsibility. They, they were my babies, but I wanted them to be good dads. With grandparenting, my only job is love. And it's liberating. And I've heard people say, you know, as a granddad or a grandmother, you can hand the baby back after you're done and go home. It's not something I think about. What I think about is it's not my job to raise them. It's not my job to tell the parents how to raise their child. My only job is love. And I love that. From Amanda R., would you ever consider releasing your own music? Uh, well, I did for many years. Um, I did my first recording when I was 20 years old. So that was 38 years ago. Uh, and I don't think many people heard it at all. Uh, it was kind of a country record, country music. Uh, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. I met some amazing people. Uh, and it was kind of shelved, unfortunately, out of just life opportunities. And it was one of those uh, independent projects that never saw the light of day, but I'm proud of it and work with some amazing people, as I said. Um, I also then was involved with a, a Bible college that released worship music. And in, in Christian circles, worship music has now become very popular. Back then, we had no distributor. It was all word of mouth, but it really took off for a while and opened up opportunities for me to travel the world. And I joke all the time with people, you know, that my kids, their first opportunities on stage were backing me up, either at church or out on the road when I was doing concerts. Uh, some of that material lives out there. Uh, one of the records that I worked on recently, I was talking to an artist that I produced years and years ago. I mean, she doesn't even have it online. She said, I'll send you a CD because I wanted to hear the music again. It's like, I don't even have a CD player. Uh, so I've been doing this so long that... Uh, Sometimes it's amazing for me uh, to see what's happened. And I mentioned it here before, but one of my songs, To Him Be Glory, was translated into Portuguese, A Elia Gloria, and has done very well as a worship song and a popular song down in Brazil. And I'm so fortunate that things I worked on continue to have impact. Thank you for your question. I hope that answered it. Uh, from Crystal A, would you do anything differently while your kids were growing up, knowing what you know now about how quick their career grew. There's so many things that I would do uh, that are different. Um, I would take the pause and the need for a pause more seriously. I would not worry so much. Uh, I worried a lot about a lot of things, and it had impact in me uh, and might have contributed. That stress might have con contributed to my colon cancer, uh, but also I am confident, unfortunately, that the stress they saw me wearing and the stress that I manifested created stress for them, and that's something that I regret. Uh, and I wish, rather than pacing the floor and worrying and having to process, but in that processing, thank you, Bob Mason. Thank you, Johnny Wright and many others for helping me process the concern for my children. But I carried it. It weighed on me. And unfortunately, that isn't healthy to live in. So I would change that. Um, I think if I could go back, I would prepare my kids the way I often prepare people now. I recently had an artist about two years ago sign with a major label, and the day they signed, I said, I've got good news and I've got bad news, and that is you've signed with a major label, and I'm so sorry you signed with a major label. Uh, don't take it, anything, as an indication of whether you're successful or not. You know, I've seen my kids shelved multiple times, dropped multiple times, pushed aside multiple times, and they survived. It's the talent 
that will keep you going. And so for those of you that have talent and you're like, when are people going to notice me? Be careful what you wish for. In the meantime, do it yourself. In the meantime, make your career your own because no one in your life is going to give you millions and millions and millions of promotion dollars and recording dollars without you working. So work. And if you're doing it independently, do it independently because the minute you get the other side of it, you'll see the other side of that. It all looks good till you're in it. So whatever you do, do the work. Whatever you do, work hard. Whatever you do, remember that if the gift is in you, it's yours to steward. Your manager, your record company, your publicist, your social media folks, your parents, the little group of people you have around you, they're all going to be important. But if you are not working your career, you will not succeed. And if you do have a pop, it'll be short-lived because you don't manage it properly. So work, 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 work. And ultimately, the doors will open. And that's my feeling. So I've answered a few of these questions. I hope that was great for you. It was therapeutic for me. I will not need my stress ball quite as much today. And I will not need my therapist as much this week. So thank you very much for your questions. This is going to be an amazing week. Thank you for listening to Legendary, the podcast. Please, if you would, hit a follow, share with others, subscribe, share it with your friends. We're hoping to make this a really special place. And what we have coming up in 2023 is really amazing. Thank you. Talk to you soon.